Hi everyone, this is Neil Reiterter, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for joining me in my latest video. We have here a patient who attended with bilateral ear infections, and I'm just commencing with this, their right ear first, which is the worst ear out of the two. And you, as you may have noticed already, um, the patient's ear kind is extremely swollen and inflamed to the point that it's very difficult to even uh, obtain access into the ear. So um, I've just inserted the endoscope through the entrance and I'm using the endoscope to stretch open the ear, uh, almost like a crowbar, to allow me to insert the instrument. And because of how narrow and inflamed the ear canal is, at the moment I'm using the fine end suction probe because I assumed it would be very difficult to get the full zone of suction probe. So we're just more on here, uh, approaching now the medial aspect of the ear canal. And this is where the patient's got this discharge and dead skin. As you can see, I'm peeling that away now. And also some really heavily impacted debris um, right up against the eardrum. And because the ear's so swollen, it's so difficult to get access into the ear. And it was a really interesting day. So this, this, this procedure was performed today. And I actually had my 15-year-old uh, nephew uh, attending the clinic today uh, as part of their work experience. And it couldn't have been a more perfect day, actually. We've had a really good uh, range of different cases. The morning started off with um, earwax impactions. They were, were relatively straightforward, forward, but uh, the first one of the day was a bit tricky, actually. Um, so they, they got to see that. And then this afternoon, for some reason, just had infection after infection. And um, so this is one of the patients. The other patient I had today, they had the smallest of perforations, what we call it, call it a pinhole perf. So the area was heavily infected and I cleared the majority of the debris. But every time I went back into the ear, there was more discharge appearing from somewhere. And I checked for cholesterol because sometimes you can get cholesterol on the uh, top part of the eardrum and that can release discharge there's, there's none there there's no cholesterol I cleared away all the debris to check underneath and it's only when I started suctioning some discharge off the eardrum I spotted the smallest of perforations and every time I cleared the discharge there's more discharge coming out so they had a middle ear infection and this fluid this infected discharge was coming through the perforation into the ear canal so that was a really interesting case and I'll try and upload that later in the week I just spent a few minutes in that patient with the suction probe right up against the pinhole perforation to suck out all the infection behind it. So going back to this case, you can just see how inflamed the canal walls are, which is uh, prevents me from really manipulating the instruments, limited space in there. But the fine end is it's really, really tricky to remove this because it just doesn't have the same suction power. Uh, so I'm giving it a go because of how narrow the ear canal is. And in a minute or so, or probably a bit longer than that, I then decided let's just try and get this full zone of suction probe in there. And I was able to do it, which is, uh, I was really pleased about. So it was the patient, of course, because I could remove this blockage. And this is right up against the eardrum, and it, it's, it looks like it's been impacted. The patient denies using any cotton birds or poking in the ear but its medial location and the fact that it's so squashed suggests to me that there is some sort of impaction but we'll never know um so the patient has already been uh, the visit to the gp and they've been prescribed both topical and oral antibiotics they had a similar um problem three years ago and that was the first time that they visited me and they had um, probably a similar infection it was just as inflamed so we cleared it on that occasion and unfortunately just flared up for the patient again so I'm just trying to go to the roof of the ear canal with a fine end and bring this down now we can't use a hook or a job some horn here the ear canal's too narrow I just won't get access into the ear and obviously the ear's infected and make, come, when it's this close the only way I can use the hook is to get it in and behind and you'll be up against the eardrum so uh, forceps just wouldn't fit in there so we, we have to use the suction and no we can't use water either that's really important so um, I mean I don't perform ir irrigation in any case but 
the last thing you want to do when you've got an infected ear is to in introduce water into the ear to try to flush it out. That's just going to make this infection worse. It's going to exacerbate it. So we're just going to persevere. I don't even want to use any drops because when the ear is this swollen, the drops will collect and it might obscure my view with the endoscope as a result. So I'm just trying to persevere. You can see the the core of this debris is quite dry and around the periphery, especially at the base there. It's quite um, slimy and sticky and wet. So again, I'm stretching the ear open. And I think I'm now just decided to use the full zone resorption probe and I just about managed to squeeze it through. It was a tight squeeze, but instantly it allowed me to get this plug out. Now, as I was moving this plug, it got trapped here, near the entrance, where this is a big part of swelling here. You can see that swelling either side, and it's almost like a crocodile. It's got its jaws around this plug, so I'm just going to squeeze this through. I'm just tucking it there. And slowly but surely, there we are. So I'm going to re-enter the ear. Again, I'm going to stretch the ear open. We're going to go through the swelling. The eardrum looks intact. It looks healthy enough. It's just a bit of dampness at the bottom of the ear canal. So I'm just going to go back in and just remove as much as I can, as safely as possible. Remember, the ear canal is quite tender already. So we don't want to add to any discomfort the patient's already experiencing. So just going to hover over. So I think my nephew had a good day today watching all the cases. Um, it was I was watching over my shoulder. Um, it was great with the patients. Patients really warm to him. He's for a fifteen year old. He's very mature. Um, so I'm not sure whether he wants to go into healthcare, but uh, he was fascinated, and we did give him a go on the mannequin. So we our training mannequins, and I train Cleowax specialist. Uh, he had a, I wasn't present now. Um, he was upstairs with my business development manager of Clearwax, and that's where our kind of training centre is as well. And um, he had a go, and he came down. He was obviously very excited. He says, "I can't believe I had a go on the mannequins." And he, I think he watching it, he he was he felt it would be quite straightforward to do. And uh, when he came down, he says, "I just he was quite shocked by how intricate the procedure is," and he says he couldn't believe how how narrow the ear is and how difficult it is to get two instruments in there. So he was really fascinated by the whole procedure. So I think he enjoyed it. I hope he did. I enjoyed it. It was good because it gave me an opportunity to um, just like, you know, uh, almost explain things to him. And I, I enjoyed that aspect of um, teaching. And he was very intelligent, so he grasped it very quickly. I think the main positive he's got, he's got, a, for a young boy, he's very mature and he's, he can build a good rapport with patients. And I think that's so critical in what we do as healthcare professionals is to build that rapport with your patient. You want your patient to feel comfortable with you. Um, you they're, they're trusting you to go into their ear. Um, and obviously a lot of patients are worried about that because it's their ear, it's important to them. And it's just to put them at ease. So that's the eardrum. Happy with that. Patient's going to use the drops, and the, the, so they're using. They got uh, a double attack. They got topical treatment, so in the form of drops. I think it was a spray actually, and orals, which is more systematic. So um, hopefully that will do the trick. The patient's already aware from the previous appointment three years ago to avoid water, and they've they said they've done all the right things, which is great. So the left side, they I've got otitis externa, but it's not swollen, it's not inflamed, but the ear canal is tender. You can see it's a bit red, um, and there is some medial debris here. You can see half the eardrum to the right hand side, the eastern hemisphere. Now you can see the southern hemisphere. Just at the roof, we've got this plug. I'm going to just peel it down so to detach it from the roof. It just looks like a lot of dead skin that's curled up in the ball. And I'm going to spend a good four or five minutes now just doing a skin peel. So it may not be, you can see some skin here more medially, but there's a lot of skin on the anterior canal wall, the front part of the ear canal. And whenever anyone's got 
an infected ear, you're just going to be really, really careful when you approach the ear canal wall. So when you've got inflammation of the ear canal and you're poking and prodding around it, if you make contact with it and cause trauma, it's more susceptible to infection. So you'll be really careful. Some of it's quite sticky and gooey. this down and away. Got quite a bendy ear in, in this side. It may well also have it on the right, but everything was swollen, so it's hard to tell. So just going to the bottom of the ear, I'm going to peel this up and away, and you'll see a slither of dead skin here. You can see it's just appearing. You can compare it to when you've got something, a sticky label on a on an object, like a, a glass jar or a box or an envelope, for example, and you're trying to peel it off, you're trying to find the edge, and once you've got the edge, you can then start to peel it away. And you want to, what I'm trying to do is peel it without breaking it. Ideally, you want to peel it in one segment, but it's not always possible. It's to do with the migration patterns of the ear canal, so the, the skin as it migrates, it sheds in different directions radially around the perimeter of the ear canal, so it's only natural that when you peel skin, it'll find either a weak link and it will detach. So we're right near the eardrum here, this is the inferior recess. Just tugging it and pulling it up and away. And I'm peeling back upon myself there. I was hoping to get more skin out when I was coming back upon myself, but it wasn't to be. And again, if, if, if any clear work specialist left this as, as it was it was not a problem at all but I just wanted to see if I could get a bit more out when you've got an infected ear the more debris you get out so all this dead skin that I'm removing when the patient then comes to use the topical prescribed medication it can come in direct contact with the canal wall and the bacteria or fungi whatever it may be causing the infection uh, when you've got this layer of skin of course you may have some bacteria on the surface but it could be hiding underneath the skin so the skin's almost a barrier, this dead skin between the drops and the bacteria or fungi. So removing it exposes the bacteria or fungi that's causing the infection and just gives the drops a better opportunity of doing it, working its magic. This front part of the ear canal is always, I find it, it's, it's the, probably the most tricky part of the ear to uh, peel dead skin or work on this part. I find it the most sensitive part of the ear canal as well. So... Here we're going to be really gentle. You can see I'm getting a thick blanket of dead skin here. It's quite satisfying. And I've, I've angled the suction probe here, so it's well. I should have said I've I've I've, I've, I've made a bend on it. And I've just adjusted the, uh, the the fine end on the main zone, so I've rotated it. So the bend is facing away from the front part of the ear canal. And that uh, just helps me to ensure that the tip of the fine end is not going to dig into the canal wall. So if you kind of angle it away from the front part of the ear canal, you can almost glide it gently against the front part of the ear canal without the worry of it stabbing into the front part of the ear canal. If the angle was corresponding in direction to the front part of the ear canal, it's going to be digging into it. So by angling it away and then gliding it, you're minimising the risk of causing any trauma. So that's the eardrum, I'm really pleased with that. I think I'm just going to mop up around the edge, near the entrance. So this is the posterior conchal cartilage wall, which extends into the back part of the ear canal near the laterally. Just at the floor of the ear canal. You can see how the ear canal veers off to the left. I'm just going to have a final view. So this is more superficial otitis externa, whereas the right side is more deep. Um, otitis externa so it's more swelling well i hope you enjoyed that video guys take care keep well speak soon bye